Hello guys, welcome back. So now once again we are going to continue FIMM integration here. And where we left last session, guys, I think. Okay, so these all configurations we have already done. <coughs> creation of metal master is also done. Creation of jail account is also done. Assignment of GL account is also done. Okay, so vendor extension, I think we'll check whether it is done or not. So I think here itself we have left. Now. I think vendor extension is also done. Let me check it. Taking some time. Let's zero two. What about the DL account assignment? Let me check. I think till here we have done. Yes, here we have done. And I think vendor extension also we have done. It is like TM20 I was supposed to give. TM20. And then, yes, this is done. So vendor is also extended. Now what next, guys? Let me check it. Okay, so document type. Check the document type, guys. Uh, these are the document type which is going to be triggered during testing so here what happens guys if you're going to test it there might be a chances that somebody has changed the document type sorry uh, somebody has changed the number in your date so initially itself we are going to check it so that there won't be any issues OBA7 so now here Zero one, it's fine. So here we are having R E W A W E. I think somebody has deleted W A document type. It's there. Zero one is there. R E document type. Here also, everyone, everywhere, zero one, zero one is assigned. So we have already created this number in, so there won't be any issues. Now, so we'll start from creation of purchase order. So till now, what we have done, guys? Till now, we have done the configuration part. In the configuration part, what is happening? Of course, uh, lots of confusions will be there. But as I told you, except this GL account creation and assignment, except this GL account creation and assignment, nothing is going to be done by 
you people. It will be done by MM people that is coming from Vital management side only. It is not coming from FI side. Even most of you uh, will not be having authorizations also of uh, what to say uh, those transaction code which we have used or in Spark also. We will be having authorizations now. Uh, here, so we have done with the configurations. If you don't go the document type, guys, document type, everybody will be having access or authorization of this uh, certain, uh, what do you say, this one configuration in that document type also will be there because document type doesn't mean that only it is we are going to use for F from FI side only. It is uh, coming like from MM side also, HR side also. Uh, PP uh, is also there. I want to say uh, SD is also there, right? So document type everybody will be having whatever their related document types are there. They will check it. They are going to create the number range and they are going to assign it. Or else even it can be done by a FI consultant also. Create some number range for transaction posting. The same transaction code is going to be used. Now, <laughs> So we'll start our testing here. We'll create a purchase order. Create a purchase order. ME20M21 and is the transition code. Okay. So here. <coughs> You just do one thing. Only purchase organization and company code is appearing. Why it is so guys? Somebody has changed. Standard PO. Okay, give your purchase organization TM20 and then company code also TM20 and then press enter here for purchasing group. We are going to give standard triple zero and then enter the vendor number so here we have to enter the vendor number the vendor for which we have like you have to make sure that the vendor must be extended for purchasing purchase area right purchasing data so i think this one 261 is the vendor which we have extended then you click on expand this item overview here. Here item overview means here we are going to uh, specify like which material we have to purchase, what should be the expected delivery date, uh, right? Where it is going to be delivered, like <coughs> for which plant this is going to be uh, this this view is going to be created, for which storage location it is going to be created. These details we are going to specify here. So TM20 underscore. RM, this is what the material master which we have created. Short text, no need to give. It is going to be updated automatically. PO quantity, any quantity can be given. I'll give one. And here, net price, you can specify. And then you have to give plant. Plant is TM20 and storage location is also TM20 itself. And press enter. So these all details we have given, right? Now <coughs> we'll do one thing. If you uh, okay, now here what will happen, guys? Even uh, okay. So click on here. Check. Check means like system is going to check. If you are going to click here, system will check like all the details are given. Whatever the required details are there is given or like uh, still anything is missing, right? So 
here no message issue during check it means there is no problem okay so now we can save it so PO number this one got created you can copy this number or else let's suppose if you forgot in your PO number then you can you can get the list of PO also here this is the transaction code ME2M so I think we have created only one PO right now slash n m e 2 m so multiple selection parameter is there like purchase organization wise plans wise metal wise you can execute since we are having only one PO that is the PO number <coughs> now so what we have done we have created the purchase order right during purchase order there is no accounting entry guys so we have to check like whatever configurations we have done whatever gl account assigned we have assigned whether it is going to be triggered in correct way or not so here onwards goods receipt onwards what is happening guys the accounting entry is going to be generated suppose the goods receipt that is mi0 transaction code okay so here you need to select goods receipt and then goods receipt is going to be posted with reference to your with reference to your PO PO number I couldn't so I'll check it Yeah, this is what is our PO number. Where it is, here it is. <coughs> Take this PO number and you give it here, press enter. Is not yet released. Oh my god. <coughs> so guys, now here this is this is like uh, online server multiple people are doing the settings and all somebody has somebody has implemented release strategy right so release strategy means uh once the po got created it must be released okay <coughs> have i given any transaction code here no it is not there so how to release the po i think and me 29 is the transition code release the standard view me 29 and right here if I let me check it guys yeah, this is the purchase order. Press enter. <coughs> okay, so now it is released. Look at here, release strategy, and then here we first of all I have released here, and then here like two level they have already uh, uh, you know okay that is that is solely like if you talk about the release strategy and all that is uh, uh, coming from MM side only okay that like see uh, it's a kind of again additional control we can say PO got created right instead of instead of like ten quantity somebody has given an order of hundred quantity so who is going to benefit it guys vendor is going to get the benefit right price is the same price is same there won't be any changes in terms of pricing right 
so uh, this this like whatever uh, the tolerance groups are there in the sense tolerance limits are there is not going to trigger whereas in terms of quantity it can be more right p over created it is sent to the vendor and vendor is deliver you the goods so now here what is happening so some additional check is applied that is called release release strategy means once the pu got created by a particular user in that case it must be approved by somebody so how it is going to be approved guys this is the release strategy it means like once it is created then somebody supposed to release it so two level here it is like manager and supervisor okay first of all anybody like supervisor is going to release it supervisor it means supervisor will check the details of the uh, you know po right they are going to check here <coughs> okay this is what the quantity it's okay uh, then they are going to release it okay and uh, again it is going to be released by manager also they will also check it and if everything is fine they are going to release it so this is additional check we can say so me 29 n is for release i'll specify here and every 29 and for release okay so now I will so forward and this time you can go guys. So we have released it. Now you save this purchase order first. Come back. And then once again, now here I'm going to press enter. It's not yet released. So once again, I'm going to use MIG or transaction code. Okay, now here it is fine because we have released. Now it got expect, uh, accepted. So now what you have to do, guys, you just are going to check here also. Okay, uh, like with reference to goods receipt is going to be posted with reference to PO purchase order. See, guys, here we are not going to do anything. Simply all the details are going to be copied from purchase order itself. What do you have to do? You just come down and uh, Once again, like it is going to be cross verified by user and if they find everything is okay They will click on item. Okay here and then still they will click on check check means further it is going to tell you that Further it is going to tell you that whether it is fine or not so system is saying that earliest possible delivery date is this one okay it's okay this is a warning message it is talking about the delivery date and all right like uh, system is saying that okay now here 25th of right so today is 25th right now even expected delivery date also somewhere i have given the current date only so that is what system is saying that it's not possible to deliver the like anyway if we are going to raise a PO today itself how can we expect delivery today itself at least it will take one day right so now <coughs> that was warning message now you just post it here save it control is <coughs> so look at here this is what the material document if you want to so you have to click on display here you just display this document number is here, just press enter here. This is what the document number, right? This is what the document number. <coughs> now, you click on document info and click on FI document. So here we will come to know. Look at here guys, your stock of raw material is going to be debited and GRI account is getting credited. This is getting triggered from BSX and this is getting triggered from WRX. Even this is also appearing, right? Now, 
so how system is going to determine the GL account guys it's not only uh, see I'll tell you multiple elements are responsible here it is a bit difficult to understand why because one should have a very good understanding of MM uh, module also and very good understanding of FI module also they how you guys will be able to understand which is almost uh, impossible why because MM export means somebody uh, will be like a separate consultant will be there for FICO a separate consultant will be there now still I'll tell you now whenever we are going to post <coughs> Whenever we are going to post uh, this goods receipt, right? It is posted with reference to what, guys? It is posted with reference to purchase order, right? Now, GL account we have assigned against uh, this one. Valuation grouping code, right? And most important is valuation class. And against this combination, we have assigned the GL account, right? So for valuation grouping code, how system will be triggered the valuation grouping code, guys? So valuation grouping code is nothing but the group of valuation area. And what is the valuation area? Plant, right? Plant code. So if system is able to trigger the plant, then system will be able to find out valuation grouping code as well. Isn't it? Now, now what will happen? So since it is getting posted with reference to purchase order. So from PO system is going to identify the plant. System is going to identify the plant, right? And then, then, so from plant system is going to identify, from plant system is going to identify the valuation grouping code. Why? Because if you guys are able to remember here, somewhere look at here omwb so value some grouping code is here the plant is going to be assigned our value some area is plant so look at here this plant is going to be assigned with value some grouping code so first of all system has triggered what a change order during goods receipt right and in PO already we have entered the plant system identify the plant code and against plant code what is happening we have assignment of valuation grouping code so system is going to trigger this valuation grouping code so system found these details triple zero one what next the next one is valuation class also against this combination we have assigned the GLM, right so valuation class <coughs> now so here system is going to add it how system is going to trigger the valuation class guys okay? so system is going to this valuation class is specified under material master right so how system is going to identify the material master guys of course uh, from purchase order itself as i told you goods receipt is going to be posted against purchase order so again system is going to trigger the po and purchase order from again purchase order system is going to trigger the material master in metal master we have already given the valuation class so valuation class is going to be triggered both combinations has been identified by system and against this combination whatever GL account we have assigned is going to be triggered by system but again uh, if you uh, we have assigned in OBYC OBYC setting right in OBYC setting we are having valuation multiple uh, transaction event key. What is the transaction event key, guys? These are the transaction event key. Here I shown you this BSX is there, WRX is there, BSX, WRX. These are the transaction event key. So how system is going to trigger this transaction event key, right? So guys, this transaction event key is going to be triggered by system. Whenever we are going to post a transaction, guys, if you talk about the goods received, it is getting posted against a particular movement type okay this movement type is there 101 right likewise multiple movement types are there okay and there is a connectivity between movement type and project transaction event key this connectivity is going to be controlled by mm people itself huge and huge number of configurations are there guys and huge and huge number of like 
uh, it's it's quite complex that is why i have not shown this right because lots of things will come into picture in that and it is going to make you confused but generally there is a connectivity between this movement type and what to say uh, transaction event key so with the help of this movement type system is going to identify the transaction event key guys okay and against that transaction event key whatever gl we have assigned against the particular combinations against this combinations is going to be determined by system so look at here how many elements are coming into picture lots of elements are coming into picture not a single one right we are having like uh, of course like uh, that valuation area is coming into picture in the sense this like valuation grouping code is coming into picture so uh, valuation class is coming into picture movement type is coming into picture transaction event key is coming into picture right <coughs> so here if somebody asks like okay during uh, what to say whenever we are going to post the goods receipt right so during goods receipt how system is going to uh, determine the GL account automatically so you have to say that yes GL account is going to be determined by system from OBYC setting GL account is going to be determined by system from OBYC setting but again multiple elements are responsible to determine this GL account because in OBYC settings in OBYC table we are going to assign the GL account against certain combinations certain combinations those combinations could be like valuation grouping code and valuation class so during transaction posting whenever we are going to post a transactions against against this uh, what to say against the purchase order whenever we are going to post the goods receipt against purchase order then system is going to trigger the purchase order first and from purchase order itself like if you talk about how system is going to trigger the values of grouping code then system is first of all system is going to trigger the purchase order purchase order from purchase order system is going to identify the values and area right and once the system is going once the system identify the values and area then valuation grouping code is nothing but the combination of valuation area so from there system is going to identify system is going to trigger the valuation grouping code if we talk about valuation class then how system is going to trigger the valuation class again from purchase order itself system is going to trigger the material master and from material master system will identify the valuation class and again this combination whatever gl is there that is going to be triggered by system right and uh, if somebody asks like okay how system is going to trigger this transaction event key because that is also responsible you can say that whenever we are going to post the goods receipt it is going to be posted against a particular uh, what to say <coughs> uh, movement type so from movement type system is going to identify the transaction event key if you are able to explain at this level it's okay if not then at least you can say I'll tell you 99% of the people simply they will answer in a single line that in OBYC from OBYC system is going to identify the GL account right but you have to say of course system is going to identify system is going to trigger the GL account from OBYC setting itself but multiple elements are responsible to determine the GL accounts right and these elements are violation grouping code uh, movement type then uh, what to say uh, valuation class right even uh, directly indirectly even material type is also responsible guys but it is having uh, different logic so don't say those things simply you can say like these are the elements which is responsible and transaction event key also so we can say what like transaction first of all like you have to say valuation grouping code then valuation class movement type and then we are having transaction event key at least these are the things you can say even valuation area also Valuation area also because first of all system is going to trigger the valuation area and then only from valuation area system is going to trigger the valuation grouping grouping code right so these all are the element which is responsible guys 
So at least you have to say that whenever we are going to post the goods received, system is going to determine the GL account automatically. And this GL account is coming from OBYC setting itself. But here multiple elements are responsible to trigger this GL account and those elements are valuation grouping code, valuation class, movement type, transaction event key and valuation area. So these all are the element which is responsible to trigger the GL account. If somebody asks how, then you can explain whenever we are posting the goods receipt, it is posted against the purchase order. So from purchase order, first of all, system is going to determine the valuation area like against which valuation area it is created right and against valuation area from valuation area system is going to identify trigger the valuation grouping code because valuation grouping code is nothing but the group of valuation area right so this is how system is going to identify the valuation grouping code and apart from this if you talk about uh, valuation class then that that is also going to be triggered by system from purchase order itself first of all system is going to trigger the material master from material master system is going to identify the valuation grouping sorry valuation class and against this valuation grouping code and valuation class against this combinations whatever gl account we have assigned is going to be triggered this is what you have to say and this is how you have to say now what we have done guys i'll come back once again here so i'll have to log in once again So what we have done, we have just, we have posted goods receipt, right? You just do one thing, one more thing I have to show you, go to MM03 and here since the goods receipt got posted, so TM20 underscore RM, press enter and you deselect all these things keep only accounting and press enter here and pm20 you give your plan and press enter so look at here guys now <coughs> one quantity of stock we have ordered right and it is delivered also so the moment it is delivered now what is happening here the total stock how many so one quantity only we have ordered so total number of stock is one only right and total value of the stock is 100 so moving average price total value of stock divided by total number of stock so 100 divided by 1 of course it is going to be 100 itself now i'll set up one more purchase order first of all we'll see the uh, you know like uh, invoice posting also we have to post the invoice also so once we post the invoice then i'll come back and we'll see the calculation of moving average price how it is getting calculated it's very simple moving average price is getting calculated by total value of how so total value of stock is going to be divided by total number of stock and whatever equals result is coming is going to be updated here so you just do one thing open one more screen and here you can go to Okay, so go to MIRO project code. Okay, we have received the goods, right? So goods receipt is done. Goods receipt is done. Now invoice receipt, MIRO. So you just do one thing. IRO project code. Company code, TM20. Let's enter here and okay now give your voice state and here first of all you give the sorry what is on the number <laughs> what is the PO number guys again I forgotten so let me check it So 
So EO is the purchase order. Again, so here invoice is also going to be reposted with reference to purchase order itself. Give the PO number and press enter. And here the amount is going to be also, you have to give the amount, right? Press enter. Okay. Why the amount is supposed to be given here manually, guys? Of course, there might be a chances of certain differences, might be uh, a difference of one rupees, two rupees, there might be differences, right? So the exact amount is going to be here, going to be posted here, and whatever differences are there, that is going to be posted to a different account that is called price differences. We can say that is going to be posted to price difference account. Now look at here, guys. So uh, once we have given the amount here, now the message, look at here, this message, error message got highlighted. So you need to click here. What kind of message here? So first of all, error in account determinations. Table this one. What is the error, guys? Let me check it. Where is the error? Account determination table T030R. Right? In the chart of account, you are using no rule was found for account key determination. So what kind of this table is let me check it guys so <laughs> let's see 16 and here, BSX is there, WRX is there, it's okay, everything is fine, then where is the problem? And um, 210. What is this 210, guys? TM2201. 201 is what? Just. So now. We'll do one thing, guys. Wait for a moment. So now this might be related to the tax code maybe. Let me check it. Transaction 201. What is this 201?
What is this two zero? <coughs> Okay, let me check it guys. First of all, OB, BZ, let me check my tax procedure here. I heard the tax procedure is different. Sorry, lesson. Country code. And here PM20. It does not exist. The tax procedure itself is not existing, right? So that is why I think we are getting this error, guys. So what we have to do, we have to set up the tax procedure. Right. So I'll just do one thing. Plus N. So I'll have to set up the tax procedure, right? So if I'm going to set up the tax procedure, then it will take time, guys. I just obq one. So in a small tax procedure, I'll just be yeah, here. Okay, I'll just check this one. I'll copy this one. This is a very small procedure. So I'll just copy this one. Okay, TM20. Quickly. Save it. Now here, we are having like only input and output guys, I have not segregated G C, G S, T, S, G S, T. Okay, input and output, MWAS, MWBS. So now what we have to do, MWS and VST, these are the account keys. So we have to create the <coughs> GL account. That's an FS level zero. I'm just going to create input and output. So here one zero five zero. Any text, any jail code can be given, guys. So now here I'm going to quickly. I'll set up, guys. Okay, so now here CGST input I'm going to copy and I'll make it 2050 and here GST of tax and now just liability and save it. So 1050 and 2050. Now we just go to OB40 quickly and I'm going to assign this. So here we are having MWS and VST. So come down guys. Okay. 
Okay, now here it will be MWS double click and start up account. Now here control is and here I'm going to output means liability. So 2050. Press enter and then input is VST. So just drag it down here. Come up. VST here. Just control S. And one zero five zero. This is input. Okay, so this is what the and then you just go to slash and FTXP country code and here I'll just create zero percent tax code only. Now just go to slash and OBVZ. Now we have to change the assignment here. I'm doing it quickly, guys. Now we just go to FTXP. We'll set up the tax code here. A0. So here's zero percent input tax. Okay, this is output tax actually. You just save it and again make it V0 and 0% this is input tax. Okay, and save it. Now, so uh, remaining other taxes you can create, guys. Now, here, so this is what the setting we have done. Now, let me come back once again and use my road transaction code. Now, let's see what is happening. So, that's the end. So once again, we have to give you a date. Amount is 100 only. Give you a PO number. Press enter. Enter everything is fine. Now there is no message. No error message is appearing here. Click on simulate. So look at here now what is happening guys. System is able to identify like GRIR clearing account is going to be debited and your vendor is going to be credited this year year clearing account is coming from where guys it is going to be triggered from again obyc itself against wrx now here okay so if you click on back okay still we are having error click on message now check it what is the message so now no tax on sales purchase is allowed for account type for account 2015. 2015 we have given or 2050 we have given. Okay, 2015 is our GRIR clearing account, guys. So if you go to slash and fs double zero, look at here how many errors are appearing. So now here GRIR clearing account. 2015 is our GRIR clearing account. Double click on this GRIR clearing account, guys. Edit. And then here you have to make it only input tax allowed certain control must be there okay and then I think it will not appear now if you simulate click on back button now no error message is there guys now it's gone so simply you can post it to get here the accounting entry everything is fine you can click here also or else to post it here also to post it post it so look at here this is what the document which got posted where is the click on display here check on accounting entry here also how to check the accounting entries guys look at here follow on documents and here you can check the accounting entry so what we have done guys we have posted like goods receipt invoice receipt here now we'll talk about the calculation of moving average price here how the moving average price is getting calculated i told you total value of stock divided by total 
number of stock that is why i have created only one like i have given a stock quantity one quantity only now let's suppose i am going to uh, so create one more view slash so, and me 21 and here and one more purchase order give you a company code here company code purchase organization vendor number and if you press enter then you have to give in purchase group also triple zero we are going to give the standard and then uh, here expand this line item this one middle master once again and how many quantity again one quantity but this time net price is going to be like uh, one one zero okay so now here if you and give your plant code storage location once again if you press enter this price is going to be changed why because system is going to select 100 only why because whatever the previous PO document got created from there system is going to check what price we have given and automatically that price itself is going to be updated press enter look at here 100 got updated net price adopted from last document from previous purchase order right so now we can change it okay now this is what you just click on <coughs> check everything is fine control is save it our PO number is 1002 you just save it now once again go to goods receipt mi0 slash and mi0 and here you give your purchase order press enter okay once again it is not released so you just go to me29 and and then you click on other purchase order and here give the next purchase order number and once again what you have to do guys you click on header here and look at here really really the strategy so you need to click here release and then second one also release and save it at both level we have released now you just go to mi0 give you a pure number and now everything is fine just click on item ok if you want to check here click on check system is saying that this is the warning message it's ok and post it post it now we have posted so what is happening here now in this earlier total stock quantity one and stock value 100 this time total stock quantity one plus one so it is going to be two and total stock value so 100 and plus one one ten so two one ten right two one ten divided by two how much one zero five so moving average price supposed to be 105 right the calculation is pretty simple here if you come back and press enter right don't look at any calculation procedure guys here the simplest calculation look at here in front of you i've shown you right in google's like i've seen there are certain complex things also people upload updated but it's pretty simple total value of stock is going to be divided by total number of stock equals to moving average price how the moving average price twice and thrice it is already asked by people during interview okay so how the moving average price is getting calculated so moving average price is going to be calculated how so total value of stock is going to be divided by total number of stock this is how the moving average price is going to be calculated standard price means fixed price there is there won't be any changes okay moving average price is the variable price which will keep on uh, you know like changes will be there in that based on the PO prices whatever price is going to be updated on purchase order guys based on that it is going to be and when this moving average price is going to be updated guys so moving average price updation is associated with goods receipt only when we are going to receive the goods, moving average price is getting updated. 
If the goods receipt is not done, no impact. Even though we have created the purchase order, still there won't be any changes in moving average price, guys. Once you post it, the goods receipt, then only automatically the changes are applicable. Okay. So that's all in this session, guys.